Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And um, I am working on some journaling spots, some large ones that I want to have to put inside some different junk journals. And I thought I would share with you this really easy project. So I'm using um, some papers from one of my digital kits, um, Floral Delight. And um, then I'm using some of the book page that is kind of blank, you know, the in between chapters or at the front of a book, because I craft a lot with book page and I end up with quite a few of these. Um, but then of course I love to use the, the text part too. But for these, I wanted some space to write on. Um, and then I also did a little faux stitching around the edges and then I used some things from that are on my desk and my little scrap boxes um, or my extras boxes from where I've cut out little pieces from different kits or scrap of papers. So um, it's a really easy project. You could sew these if you wanted to, but it's definitely a no-sew. And um, I think these are gonna look great tucked inside journals or in pockets. Could even um, make this a page extender if you wanted to add a flap to it. And so, for example, let me grab one of my journals. Um, like if you wanted to um, add it to a page, you know, you could put a flap here or use washi tape or something, and then it could open up, or you could do it this way, right? So you see this on the page, and then it flips open like this, and you can write here and, you know, then on your paper. So again, um, it would look really cute on this one attached on this side like that. So again, lot, they're very versatile and I think um, it's a good way to use up some things that you have or if you have some pretty papers you kind of want to highlight. So you can make them different sizes, um, but a little bit larger than just kind of the standard journal card that I typically will make. So it's super easy. But it's just an idea maybe to get your juices going. So um, this is a book. I don't even remember the name of this one. That came from that book haul. The Eskimo Wife. That's what it is. I think it was like from the 1930s. Um, the paper's a little fragile. But certainly usable. Especially if it is mounted on some cardstock. So I'm going to make this first one kind of large. Like I did that when I was showing you, and I'm gonna just mount it on a piece of this um, digital paper. Now, I printed the digital on, let's see, um, this is like an 80 pound cardstock, and um, so it's gonna give it some nice structure and certainly protect this old paper once we get it stuck down, okay? Let me use those strips for something. I'm not sure yet. All right. Um, so I am going to go ahead first and ink. I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Walnut Stain today, <laughs> which is my favorite. Um, but it would be fun with the color. You know, if you wanted to pick up one of the colors in the paper, that would be fun too. I don't know why I always like brown. Do you guys have a favorite color um, that you like to use in your craft making? If so, drop me a comment and tell me. I definitely tend to go towards more of the um, earth tones and sepia tones. I'm gonna wait to ink this one until it is mounted and we'll do that side. Um, and I know that, you know, and then of course it's so funny when I then craft with some brighter colors. I usually get so many comments. Oh, I love the colors. I love the pops of colors. Um, so I know I need to stretch a little bit in my in my choices, right? <laughs> but we all like what we like. So, all right, I'm just using my um, PVA glue and. Um, and again, I usually show you guys this when I do videos because the one time I choose not to talk about what glue I'm using, that's usually what somebody wants to know. And I don't mind answering questions, but this is just the um, 
Line Co. PVA glue. And I think it is really good when I'm using these older papers and stuff. All right. And so far, I've been using it on quite a few projects in the last couple of months. I did a video when, when I discovered it. It's certainly not a new glue, but it was new to me. And I got kind of excited and did a video because I definitely am a fan of art glitter glue for a lot of my crafting. But anyway, when I found this, I've been using it and I haven't had any issues. You know, it's been great. Um, no it hasn't been lifting up it, it's just stays soft all of those things so all right just decided to use that and make sure I got it stuck down really well isn't that pretty okay so I, what I wanted to do was I've got a few of these doodads on my desk um, of just little pieces from things I've been working on, and I was hoping I could find something um, to just kind of decorate these up and make them look a little more um, finished than just a piece of paper glued together. <laughs> um, and I love doing, this already has some really pretty um, text on there but I like folding them over like this so that it wraps to the other side um, I like the look on the front but then also since this is one we're going to be um, using both sides right it will be nice to have both sides have a little something and leave the back primarily for for writing or maybe mounting a picture or something that would be pretty too or doing a collage if you wanted to do it in an art more of a collage art journal something like that okay um let's see what else i find it doesn't really quite go not that it really has to i definitely like um maybe a bird i definitely like mixing it up okay so, um, I, whoa, what was I going to say? Um, one thing I was going to tell you guys about was my little dog, Matt. He has been acting so weird lately, but he's okay. He's much, much better now, but he certainly, um, he got this weird cough and he hadn't been boarded or been to get his hair cut recently. So we didn't think it was anything like kennel cough. I think I want to put something under this bird. Maybe some of the paper that has a little bit of text. It already has text there. But let me just see what happens if I tear a little paper and see if I like how it looks. Um. Anyway, so he had this weird cough that was kind of disturbing. And then... Um, he started just acting with what I call like, you know, pain behavior. Like we might act um, if we weren't feeling well. And um, it, we, we, were, we called the vet. They didn't have an appointment for like two weeks. And so we, we kind of waited. And then one night last week, I finally said to my husband, I said, you know what? I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. He won't. He isn't like coming to see me. He doesn't want to sit in our laps. He's pretty treat and food motivated, and he wasn't doing that. So, of course, by this time, it's like 7, 7, 7.30 at night <laughs> when I decided I, could, I wasn't going to be able to sleep if we didn't do something. So, of course, we put him in the car and took him to the emergency vet, and they did their thing. And they think he had that he tweaked his back, maybe. That didn't explain the coughing, but the pain behavior and kind of how he was holding himself. But he passed all their little tests and everything. Um, and then she felt he was getting over, probably just a cold or something, which was kind of weird. But anyway, so we decided to just follow up with our regular bed. So we brought him home. And I am not kidding when I tell you guys, he was totally fine. Like the next day he woke up, he was jumping up and down again. He was coming to greet us when we walked downstairs. He was ready to have his treats. And he's been totally fine. So I don't know what happened. But it sure can scare you when your little papa that you love um, has issues. 
So anyway, I just thought I'd share that that's kind of been one of our little dramas here. I'm trying to say if I want this tab, I, I want the color. I think I'm just gonna add it to the top, right up here. Even though I already have this kind of thing over here and I still need something down there with that bird. It's a little too neutral down there. But anyway, um, a little mat is okay and um, I posted something, I think on Instagram, where I put his little picture in. Didn't even talk about why, but I was just so relieved he was feeling better. I put a sticker of him on one of my posts and he was smiling. <laughs> so that's good. And his sister, Harry, she's been totally fine. Her name's Harriet. And um, she has not had any issues, so that's a good thing. Hmm, guys, I'm not really happy with this right here. I need something, I need some more glue, but I need something that will make this pop a little bit. Hmm. hmm, let's see. Oh, here's a sticker. That's kind of weird. That wouldn't work. And... I don't know, maybe I'll just cover up part of the bird and the words with this pop of color. I'm just gonna make this one what I call true junk journal style, where we just have all kinds of things going on. How does that sound? All right, you can still see the pretty paper. And let's add a little, maybe I'm gonna cut this out, but I'm thinking maybe a little number up there. Let me pull out my little bin of numbers and things. Hmm. <laughs> I need to um, print some a little smaller because a lot of my labels right now, I think because I tend to use the little ones first, um, I don't have as many. And if you guys can hear, that's Harry and Bark, Matt, Harry and Bark, Harry and Matt. Um, they're not barking as loud as they sometimes tend to, but um, that was the other thing when he wasn't feeling well, he wasn't barking with his sister. He was letting her do all the barking. So that was just weird. And now I think we're probably getting a delivery. I'm just trimming this up because I think it'll fit better on this little tab. Um, but now he's back to barking too. So I think he feels better. And again, it could be just like us, you know, he just didn't feel good or he did kind of hurt his back. And then after he rested, he, he felt better. But it definitely felt like as soon as we decided to take him, he was suddenly fine. <laughs> but it was peace of mind, right? Peace of mind. Okay, and what do we wanna do on this side? maybe just a butterfly. All right, so this one, I'm just kind of randomly picking things while I yip yap. Okay, so like I said, I wanna leave this for extra writing space. There we go, I like it, I'm happy. So I'm gonna set it off to the side while we keep going. We'll make one more. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I was gonna show you how I was doing the faux stitching. That's what I wanted to show you. So we'll do that and then see how much time it's been. So I've got these um, pens and they're the um, Uniball Signo and I've got it in gold, silver, and I also have a white one. It was in a pack and um, we'll use the gold one. And I just did little lines like this, um, just little dashes almost. And I tried to do them fairly consistently. I'm gonna go right over that label. Um, but they're, they're not perfectly the same length, <laughs> but I think when you look at it, especially if you're not looking super, super close, it looks like, um, some stitching. And I love to sew on paper, but I know not everyone has a sewing machine or feels confident in doing that or maybe they actually sew and they don't want to put paper through their machine which I understand so this is like you know just a little nod to the look but without having to throw it on your sewing machine and again 
We used to do like back in the day, <laughs> I'm showing my age, when we did a lot of scrapbooking and stuff, you know, and you would make borders and little swirls and heart, little heart borders, or I did anyway on a lot of my pages. I think I did this then too, to make it look like a little bit of stitching. But I like that little touch of gold on there. And you know, you could do it on the other side too, but I'm not going to. I'm okay with it like that. Okay, so that's super easy. And then um, let's make one more because I have an idea to do to do something a little bit different than what I've been doing. So these are the ones that I had already made these two. Um, so let me let me try my idea. Um, okay, here's a piece that I already have, and this one let's make a different size. Let's trim the words off. Just doing a little paper tear there. Try to, we're gonna make it this size. And what size is that, you might ask? I'll tell you, let's see. That is almost six inches by four inches, so six by four. And I'm gonna just not worry too much about it because I kinda wanna layer, that is my, um, Amazon device. I'm not going to say her name because she'll start talking to us. Um, telling me that, yes, that was a delivery that had Har Harry and Matt barking. Because if we asked her, she would say, it's a delivery for, and it would say someone in our household, which would either be myself or my husband. You never know on any given day, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Um... Ooh. I am definitely enjoying all of those books that I got on my book haul. They're, it's so funny how book page can come in so many different shades of um, white or off-white. Just really make sure that glue has oozed all through here. Okay. Um because this is like just such a nice warm um, where it's aged. And then some of them stay fairly white. Some are really, really dark and just every shade in between. And it's just kind of fun. So on this one, what I wanted to do, and I'm going to have to just turn around and grab some scraps out of my scrap bin. I just thought it might be fun to layer some more things on top, even though I hate covering up the pretty paper. We'll do it anyway. Um, all right, I am just going to randomly grab and see what we have. I have a, a larger paper bin behind me that holds bigger pieces of scraps. And um, tell I'm doing some owl things again. I just love these little owls. They're so cute. Why don't we pick maybe these two? They look like little lovebirds down here. We'll put an owl on somewhere. But what I was really thinking is um, getting some larger pieces that we can um, see the difference in the colors in the book page. Isn't that fun? Um, some larger pieces that we can layer on. So I'm gonna, this is from that lace book that I love. So let's get this turned. Okay, let's see what happens. And I may want more torn edges, but I'm thinking I might be able to do something kind of kind of interesting, we'll see. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Um, it's sort of like any other kind of collaging though. You just have to kind of play with it to see if you end up with things that you like. And I always think it looks better with a little bit of distress ink. So we'll see how that'll help it come together. Um, and again, yours is gonna look different depending on what papers you have. All right. I definitely think I need a focal point um, let's see if there's anything in here I want to use. 
um, well, I picked these owls out, but this bird right here is a little bit bigger, and I want it to be torn. This was also printed out on um, kind of just copy paper, so it's definitely not as thick or hard to tear. And I may even cover that up too, but that'll give us um, a little bit different color going on. I may have to dig back in for more. Mm, I keep finding cute birds. I think I'm gonna save the owls for something else and I'm gonna cut out these little sweet guys. And maybe that Daisy, what do you think? And I think this is like a little succulent here. All right, so let's see what happens. Let's see if I can make this look like something worth it. So this would be a way, again, to just kind of move through that scrap bin and um, make a little pile. <laughs> let's call it a pile collage, you know, a little pile of papers um, and this would look pretty with like some seams going through. I think I am gonna just put this to give, get this dark leaf in there because I kind of tore that bird's head off. Sorry, little bird. Okay. Need another torn edge there. And we'll see if we even like this. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is glue all of this down and we'll see what we think. And we may need to add a little something extra. I haven't decided what yet, but a little something extra once I get all of this on here. It was looking like it still maybe needed uh, maybe a cluster or a button or a word, a focal point, something. So, oh, that's pretty on this side too. Like that green paper. All right. I don't know that this was how I had it before, but it doesn't really matter. So this is also the day that my son and his girlfriend are driving. They're moving here. Yay! Um, they have been living in Illinois, and now they are moving for my son back to Virginia. And this will be his girlfriend's first time living here. And I can't wait to see them. Unfortunately, they'll get here tomorrow and we're leaving tomorrow to head back to North Carolina for a few days. And so I'll see him probably um, early next week <laughs> when we get back. But I am excited and they are traveling and I've been trying not to do this and look at my watch every few minutes to see if he's given me an update on how they're doing. And I'm trying not to pester him because he's driving, um, which sometimes is hard. If, um, if you have kids, you probably understand what I'm saying. It's hard when they're driving. Um, but he's done, he's done well, um, let me know as they've been driving throughout the day. So we've been doing pretty good. And they're gonna stop tonight and um, then come on in tomorrow. They're taking two days, it's a pretty long drive and they have everything um, they own with them. So <laughs> to be young again, right? All right, what else do we wanna put on here? I definitely think if I can find where I put that pen. Let's do the faux stitching really quick and um, maybe a piece of ribbon or lace on this one. I still want these to lay pretty flat um, in the journal or again if we add them you know to extend the page, extend the page. Um, so I'm gonna try to be careful on what I do choose. Um, if you guys are interested in a tutorial where I go into more depth about that extend a page, let me know. Um, I kind of just talked you through how that would work. But if you'd like a full tutorial to add extra space in your journal and pages so that they flip open, you can do them on the side or at the top, let me know and I'd be happy to um, put one together for you.
Let's grab my little bag of ribbons. Are these are this is my little bag of scrap ribbons, and I have so many ribbons and so many different colors. <laughs> you would think I would um, not just keep going back to this bag, but I do add new scraps in there occasionally, so it's okay. I like these. Yeah, I think that'll still be flat enough, and this just jazzes it up a touch. Okay. A little bow and that's from some of the um, seam binding that I've hand dyed again that's a super fun project all right put it at the top I think I'll put it in the corner there and I'm just gonna use a glue dot this really holds this ribbon on really well and um, is the right size so it's not sticky around around it all right, I think that'll still be fine, tucked inside a pocket on a journal. And on this side, let's add, just for interest's sake, let's add a little strip. I'm just gonna try to find, if I can, a strip that kinda, ooh, that does, it's the same kind of color, peachy color. Um, and we'll just tear a little piece off. Yeah, I was kind of doing that on the other ones, either across the top or along one side. So it'll kind of make them a little consistent. And I promise y'all, I will do something with those little owls soon. I love those owl papers. Okay. All right, that just kind of gives it a little more finish. I love it. All right, let me show you real quick what we've got, and I hope you guys will grab some of your, um, if, you, if you craft with books like I do, some of those full pages that are kind of blank, or, you know, coffee dyed paper would work. Um, any kind of neutral scrapbook paper or junk journaling paper would work. So, um, I hope you'll give it a shot. So here's the ones that we have. Cute, right? I was happy I was able to use some of those little dogs I had left from a project I did recently. And then you can journal on the back. All right. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Thumbs up. Hope to hear from you. And y'all have a good day. Until next time.